everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. And today, I'm talking about DeMarcus Cousins injury. Welcome to my channel where I make orthopedics and sports medicine easy to understand. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I post new content, because otherwise YouTube just might not tell you. DeMarcus Cousins is an NBA basketball player who plays for the LA Lakers and he is entering his 10th year in the NBA. He injured his knee during a workout with the team in Las Vegas on August the 12th of 2019. He apparently suffered the injury after bumping knees with another player. And presently, he's expected to miss most, if not all, of the 2019-2020 season. So before we talk about this injury in particular, let's just talk a little bit about DeMarcus Cousins and his past. He previously tore his Achilles tendon in February of 2018. That year, he signed with the Golden State Warriors for $5.3 million as a free agent, but sat out most of the 2018-2019 season. He returned for the 2018-2019 playoffs but subsequently injured his quadricep muscle and was sidelined. After the playoffs, he returned to free agency this summer. He was signed to the Lakers for a one-year contract for $3.5 million. And unfortunately for DeMarcus, this is his third lower extremity injury in a short period of only 18 months. So if we watch this video from TMZ, we can see that he yells out and takes a hop step while driving to the hoop. He immediately falls to the ground and begins to point at his knees. From the video, it's difficult to see the knee-on-knee -knee contact as was reported. However, what we can see from the video is the dynamic valgus of his left knee as he plants his foot. After this injury, he was unable to return to play and he was forced to leave the practice session. Subsequent testing confirmed the diagnosis of an ACL injury of the left knee. So what exactly is this injury and what does this mean for DeMarcus and the Lakers in the future? The ACL is one of four major ligaments in the knee. There are two outside ligaments or collateral ligaments and two inside or two cruciate ligaments inside of the knee. The cruciate ligaments are named such because they cross over one another within the joint. The ACL has basically two primary functions. First, it stops the thigh bone from falling off the back of the shin bone. And second, it helps to control rotation at the knee. So how exactly does the ACL get injured? The ACL can be injured by a contact mechanism when the patient receives a blow to the outside part of the knee. However, the ACL can also be injured by a non-contact mechanism where the patient pivots or rotates away from a planted foot. The forces that cause injury to an ACL are usually a dynamic valgus or a rotatory valgus. Although an ACL tear is possible through other movements as well. As the ACL spans between two bones, it can be injured at its origin on the femur, its insertion on the tibia, or in its substance somewhere between the two. The ACL ligament can be partially torn, where only one of the two major bundles is torn, or it can be completely torn, where both of the major bundles are severed. If the patient is lucky, it can be torn in isolation, meaning only the ACL is torn, or if they're less lucky, then it can be torn in combination with other structures. Those other structures include other ligaments, the cartilage, the menisci, or the bones. So if someone has torn an ACL, how is it then that we treat this problem? So what brings you to see me today? My knee, dog. It's so swollen and unstable, I can't jump, pivot, or change direction without pain. For an anterior cruciate ligament tear, there are a number of different treatment options that can be selected, depending upon the patient, the activities that they wish to return to, and other considerations. Do you even need the ACL? That's a good question. If you want to just run straight and do no direction change, no deceleration, and no popping or jumping, then you can probably get by without it. However, if you want to do any of those things, you need an ACL. The basic treatment options include non-operative treatment with physiotherapy, bracing, or a combination of both. And on the other hand, operative fixation or operative reconstruction of the anterior cruciate ligament. In this particular case, given DeMarcus Cousins' occupation, 
as an elite level basketball player, he is likely to undergo an operative fixation or operative reconstruction of his anterior cruciate ligament. So once an athlete and his surgeon have decided to proceed with an operative fixation or reconstruction of the anterior cruciate ligament, there are still a number of decisions that must be made prior to the surgery itself. And these decisions revolve around a number of considerations. The first of which is the type of graft that should be used. There are generally three different types of graft. Allograft, autograft, and artificial grafts. An autograft is a tendon graft that is taken from the patient's own body, as opposed to an allograft, which is a tendon graft that has come from a donor, such as a cadaver or a matched living donor. And lastly, an artificial graft is exactly that. It is an artificial graft, man-made. The most commonly known version of this is the Lars ligament. Typically in this setting, an autograft would be used. An additional consideration related to the type of graft is which type of tendon should actually be used to reconstruct the anterior cruciate ligament. The common choices for this include the hamstring tendon, the patellar tendon, and the quadriceps tendon. Other issues that should be considered include the technique that will be used to reconstruct the ACL. For technique, there are two main issues that must be considered. These include the type of fixation of the ACL reconstruction and the manner in which the portals are made for the reconstruction. Where fixation is concerned, the surgeon may use conventional fixation, which usually includes suspensory fixation on the femur and screw fixation on the tibia. Or the surgeon may elect to use a newer technique, which includes suspensory fixation on both the femur and on the tibia. Wow. The other technical consideration includes the manner in which the femoral tunnel is placed. And this can be done using a transtibial technique, meaning that the femoral tunnel is created directly off the trajectory of the tibial tunnel, or this can be done through an anteromedial portal, which means that the femoral tunnel is created independently of the trajectory of the tibial tunnel. Oh. What'd you say? Put more simply, I have to make holes in the bone to put the ACL graft inside the bone. And that either means that I drill those holes at the same time, or I would drill them at different times independently of each other. The type of graft used and the technique used for its placement are decisions that will be made by the patient and the surgeon prior to surgery. However, Studies suggest that in this situation, allograft tendon should be utilized. At present, both hamstring tendon and patellar tendon grafts are the two types of grafts that are most commonly used to reconstruct the ACL. The quadriceps tendon is becoming increasingly popular as well. And although the results of reconstructions with hamstring tendon and patellar tendon grafts are essentially comparable, I suspect that in this circumstance, DeMarcus will undergo a reconstruction with a patellar tendon graft as this seems to be the choice that is favored by professional athletes. A 2014 study by Hall et al. showed that for surgeons who treated NBA athletes, 87% of those surgeons used autograft rather than allograft for artificial tendons. And 81% of those surgeons used patellar tendon grafts. And 47% of these surgeons used the anteromedial portal for independent femoral tunnel placement, with most of these surgeons being younger, having practiced for less than five years. After reconstruction of the ACL, his rehabilitation can be expected to take between nine to 12 months, although this may be expedited by a month or two if he is particularly focused on his rehabilitation and he is fortunate and does not have any post-operative complications. Most people take nine to 12 months. And in fact, current studies are showing us that it may take even one to two years for people to rehabilitate properly after an ACL injury. So with all of that being said, what does this all mean for DeMarcus and his future in the NBA? Well, let's look to the literature to get some stats on this so that we can make a prediction about what might happen. A 2017 study by Leprat et al 
reported a successful return to the pre-injury level of play in the NBA after only 9.8 months after a successful reconstruction of both the anterior cruciate ligament and the fibular collateral ligament in an NBA player. This was only a case report, but that's one player who was able to return to his previous level of play in only 10 months. A 2017 study by May et al. showed that NBA players that return to the NBA following an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction typically showed a decrease in performance in the first year after they return to play. However, in the second and third years after they return following the reconstruction, their performance usually returned to its baseline function. Now, this was a cohort study, so it has a little more power than the case report that I previously mentioned. Another 2017 study looked at 12 NBA players operated on by two surgeons after having suffered anterior cruciate ligament injuries. In this study, 89% of these players were able to return successfully to the NBA after only 9.8 months. As with the May et al study, this study showed that these players suffered a decreased performance level in their first year of return, but returned to their baseline function in their second and third years. In another 2017 study by Kester et al, a retrospective review of 79 NBA players was performed over a 30 year period between 1984 and 2014. This study showed that a number of functional metrics were decreased following an anterior cruciate ligament injury. These include playing time, games played, player efficiency, and overall career length. All of these things were negatively affected by anterior cruciate ligament injury and subsequent repair. And finally, a 2013 study by Harris et al. showed that there was a high return to sport level after an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction, with most athletes returning in the first year after their injury. However, there was an overall decrease in their level of performance after they returned to play. In this study, the incidence of retear of the ACL was low. So now that we've talked about the ACL and we have an idea of what's in store for him in the future, so how is this affected by his pre-existing injuries to his Achilles and his quadricep? Well, a 2017 study by Trafa et al. shows that approximately 70% of NBA basketball players are able to return to play after an Achilles tendon injury. Typically, they're able to do that in the year following their injury, although they will perform at a decreased level during that season. And as for the quadricep injury, we can expect that that would also increase his time to return to play at the same level. We can expect that his rehabilitation will take longer than it otherwise normally would have if his ACL injury were isolated. So I've thrown a lot of numbers at you and a lot of information from a bunch of different studies, but what does it all mean? How do we put that all together? Well, here are the main takeaways and what I think it's safe to say about DeMarcus Cousins' injury, his treatment, and his return to play after his surgery. So as we know, he has suffered a complete tear of his anterior cruciate ligament. He will undergo a ACL reconstruction. This is most likely gonna be performed using a patellar tendon autograph. There is a 50-50 chance that his surgeon will be using a transtibial over an anteromedial portal technique. However, as the anteromedial portal technique is gaining popularity, especially with young surgeons, I think that there is probably a good chance that he will undergo the anteromedial portal technique for femoral tunnel placement. His rehabilitation is likely to take between 9 to 12 months. So, we could probably expect him to return for the 2020-2021 season. We can expect that his level of play will be decreased during his first year back after this injury. Doubly so because he has undergone an Achilles tendon rupture in the year previous. We can expect by the 2021-2022 season he should be back to his regular form. Although that will be his 12th season in the NBA. And by that time he just might be slowing down. So there you have it. 
I hope I've been able to provide some insight into the DeMarcus Cousin injury. So if you like the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with somebody that you know. And if you have a topic that you'd like to know something more about, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday, nothing but net, ortho.